Can you just behave for once? Can you just behave for once? What are you talking about? What am I doing? I'm just asking you to participate. Can you just behave for once? What, it, what do you mean? <laughs> what did I do? Well, so we're going live. And I, just, I just ask you to behave for once. Oh, okay. I'll behave. All right. Just, you know what? You are so completely uncool. Do you know anything that is cool, Billy? <laughs> uh, I do, I think. Yeah? Yeah. I, is it time for cools? I think that this is what we do. I think yeah. that we're 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 live over on YouTube right now. Time we traveling. Are? Yeah, we're time traveling into the hold on. We're in the future, but we've gone back to the past to say hi to people on a Wednesday. And I just think this is what we do. I think we show the people at home the cools and, and somebody oh, that somebody yeah. that somebody that comments below uh will win a prize. You know, now that we're now that we're doing this with uh visuals. I yes. thought we needed to add a little bit more to the cools. Oh. So I have a I have a kazoo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bring hey, that's it. Cool. With Billy. Billy. Yeah. Billy? Yeah. This is what we need. We need 100 people to smash like in order to show your first cool. It's not going to happen. All right. Are you ready for me to load your first cool, sir? Sure. <laughs> Can All I right. just say, in my defense, this is the hat my wife made me for Halloween. It's a beautiful hat. Extra beautiful. <laughs> Extra tall fez. Rainbow <laughs> fez. Ryan Sanders writes in nice fez, doggy. So he already knew that it was a fez. Wow. He's in the fez club. It looks like a wizard Shriners cap to me. That's precisely what we're talking about. Here. But let's not make it too visual because after all, some people are just listening in their car right now. Not everybody's live with us over on YouTube. So Billy, what I have loaded up that everybody can see is your first cool. Go ahead. Present. Well, this was just cool because I like graphic design and sports and i found this this these guys have been around forever it's called ebbets field flannels yep they they take old logos sports logos and make jerseys and shirts and t-shirts and hats and uh i specifically saw this uh check out the uh go to flannels go to japanese baseball flannels flannels japanese baseball flannels yeah, I really liked the Tokyo Kyojin Giants, 1936. That was which kind of a racist way which one is that? It's got like a badge. Um, On the shoulder? No. K-Y-O-J-I-N. K-Y-O. I can't seem to find it here. I'm scrolling through it. Scrolling, showing everybody. Yeah. Man, these are well, really, really cool. They are cool. Um, this is probably a big company that everyone knows about already, but I, it was new to me. Yeah. Uh, man, I really like these. And the ball caps are really cool. They got, let me ask you a question. Yeah, go ahead. Would you, I would love to wear like a, um, I like Negro league stuff. It's cool. Right. I like, I love the history of baseball. Mm -hmm. I love Negro league. Would you be, would it be weird to wear and for a white guy to wear a Negro league, like baseball cap, man, if I was a person of color and I was, like uh, a musician or whatever, I would wear it all the time. Like I, I, there's such, it's such a cool vibe, but I don't think that I personally would. Yeah. I just love the graphic design of it and the, I don't know, just the history yeah. of baseball. It's just cool. Yeah. Um, Like the, do the you Kansas, see these like as the Kansas city Monar monarchs, 1954 cap. It's just cool. Do you see the, um, the historic flannels, do you see that as, as part of empowerment? Uh, what do you mean? Like wearing the old outdated flannels. Is that, do you see that as part of empowerment? Like is wearing one of those flannels paying tribute to like an important moment in sports and, and history and cultural diversity or is it an not? Appropriation. Yeah. That's, that, that's the debate I think. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't think I would ever actually wear a, a um, like a baseball 
jersey. Yeah. But um, but they look cool. They, they do. They look cool. And they I do. Like the, uh, there's this cool, <laughs> there's an awesome team called the White Elephants. That's cool. Under what um, section? The 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 Negro League flannels. It's just I never I've never heard of the team called the White Elephants. This is neat. Yeah, um, these are really cool, man. The Detroit one love, with the the R that's like white yeah. on the black stripe is yeah. rad. Yeah, that is cool. It's just so interesting. Um, yeah, I I love old baseball design too. Yeah, just all this. Um, they um, but they also just have t shirts as well, which are and some of them are really cool. They've got uh, I don't know. I gotta buy one of these things. It's really cool, like the type on the front of them is just so bare bones and it shows how much stuff is actually over designed today uh, in particularly over design in sports. But the, what really sells a lot of these, which, you know, when I look at one, I can't wait to scroll over it to see what's on that sleeve patch. Cause the sleeve patch yeah. for me is really like those little crests is really what like makes it. Yeah. It's, uh, you know what there's, there's, you know, when you have a really vintage logo that was drawn by the, the owner's kid. Yeah with a with a pen on a piece of paper and it was been photocopied and faxed a hundred times like there's something i don't know what it is the amateurism of it the the the, uh, there's a warmth to it there's a uh un uh sort of there's like a uh, geez I i don't even know the right words but it's like it's like unintellectual you know what I'm saying? It's it's it hasn't been put in, put through the smoothing machine. Yeah, and it just there's just something real. It just feels fucking real. You know. I always d- describe it as warmth. Like yeah, the reason why I would always run stuff through the the filters that I use is I I just love when you design something, and it looks like as if it's already been printed already absorbed into the pulp of paper and it's yeah. lived a little bit like yeah i sometimes when i get done with a, a, a graphic design piece i'm irritated that it's just so crisp and perfect like i want yeah. it just to look like a little bit lived in yeah agree agreed agreed so I'm yeah this is this is now. Th- where are you at you're over on sweatshirts sweatshirts yeah i can take everybody over there with you what, what's catching your eye there billy bill Oh, they're all cool. There's the Kansas City Monarchs, which has got a cool, um, you know, there's a couple of, uh, there's like a Hiroshima uh-huh. sweatshirt. I don't know if you see that one. That one's really cool. There's a Tokyo one that's really cool. Uh, Havana Cubans. That's I mean, that's just cool. They're all cool, man. I can't, I can't pick just one. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Yeah, they're really, really great. And it, it just, I think that this type of type just shows how, I know I said it earlier, but just how over-designed some things are. And there's just a a, a balance here that is just so, it, it's everything that you need and, and none of the other, none of the other, like, you know, icons and things swirling around. Like, it, it just literally goes to show, like, how many professional teams these days just have a shit look. Yeah, but as a there, it's a it's a byproduct of where we're what we're living in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's yeah. But the th- thing is, is okay. Let's say if I try to design something, yeah, like this, then it just becomes retro. You know what I mean? Or it just becomes derivative of that era. Which I don't I don't know. Is that bad? Is that good? I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting too that classic like if you just go if you just sit down right now at your computer or at your artist board and you just do something that's you know simple like this just the name of the city just arced with a little bit of imperfection a little bit of warmth added i love that basic is retro you know it has to have drop shadows and you know and a mascot illustrated next to it and all these different techniques for it to be considered modern yeah it's interesting I like this. It is interesting. How and I would yeah, like they, to say I don't know why, but why is something about the city of Kansas City? Something about that word. Yeah. It always ends up being. Oh, if there's a bunch of cities that are designed in a hat or a, 
a sweatshirt or a t-shirt it always seems to be that kansas city is is the champion on how cool it looks i don't know the chicago sweatshirt is pretty cool can't seem that to... let me ask you this would you wear one that said la or now that you live in la that would that be stupid LA is kind of a weird place because so many tourists come here and like buy LA stuff and rep it like right out of the the airport. Yeah, but I think yeah. that you know I have my Long Beach hats that Snake Oil Provisions made, and I I think if it was something that was at this level of hip, I would for sure for sure wear something that said LA. Yeah, because I got a couple. They got a couple. They got a Hollywood one, which is cool. I would not wear something that says Hollywood. <laughs> but it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless, of course, it was for Fredericks of Hollywood or my favorite restaurant to go to. You know that one. Steve's of Hollywood. Steve's of Hollywood. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Um, Hard Rock Cafe. Hard Rock Cafe Hollywood. <laughs> okay, Mark. How, how, many wait, cools? how many cools? How many cools? Well, I mean, three. Let's do it three, I guess. Three cools. Three I'm, cools. Okay, that's cool, I did it wrong. Billy. <laughs> somebody pointed <laughs> Somebody pointed out that I would wear it if it said Hollywood Bricky. Uh, I'm sorry. Mm. Oh, yeah. He said Bricky. I thought he said Brickly. I'd give him points for Brickly, but yeah. All right. I'm loading up your next cool right now, which is? The 59 Parks. Mm-hmm. I know we're all familiar with this cash grab, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this one okay so steve scott illustrator in the uk been following him for a couple of years yeah not really in the poster scene just more editorial illustration maybe guy but i saw that they putting out a gateway arch national park poster and being from st louis being you know when you're when you live in the more as you know when you've lived in kentucky or when you lived in uh, uh buffalo it's kind of hard to get cool stuff for smaller markets. Sure, sure. Right? So this poster, not only was it from an, a, a designer, an illustrator I really love, but it was from the St. Louis Arch, my hometown. So I just thought it was pretty freaking cool, man. So I didn't know who this illustrator was. Uh, yeah. Steve Scone, is that his name? Scott. Scone? Scott. Scott, sorry. I can't. My eyes are bad. I look like an in from here. Steve Scone. <laughs> So I brought up his artwork that everybody can see over on the uh, YouTube live because it's conveniently linked right over to his website. And uh, man, oh man, scrolling down this guy's homepage. You want to scroll along with me, Billy? I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. So the very first image, which is the people watching a movie and they're putting the screen together, like yeah. that color palette is so great. And, and I'm envious of people like this that know the proper amount of details to tell the story but they know when to get loose they know when to get loose you know and as you scroll down and you look at some of these scenes like the yoga studio or the people that are going into the spritz carlton those have a lot more structure to them uh to sort of tell that story and build that architecture but then how do you get all of those characters to look that organic like nobody looks stiff every person looks perfectly placed in their environment yeah, it almost looks like, um, remember Curious George books? Yes. The Man in the, the, man in the Yellow Hat. They kind of have that kind of look to his characters. Um, yeah, there's some cool stuff. I am curious if that National Park poster is actually screen printed because that's that's going to be a tough screen print. Yeah. Um, but I'm guessing it is. Uh, kind of an odd size, 24 by 32. But um, what are you going to do? I'm just it's a cool ass poster. I'm still scrolling down to his website. It's just like each one of these hor- horizontal rolls that I rows that I hit are are better than the next and it's this guy is a phenomenal illustrator and I would love to talk to somebody like this on these like these house illustrations he does where he shows all the different layers of people living in a dwelling space. Yeah. I would love to know how you map that out. I mean, obviously you got to sketch out the environment, but then how do you work all of the the characters and the storytelling through there? Like th- this guy, I I could. This is the type of artwork that I could just look at for hours and hours. And his color palette, I love somebody that even though all of these have different colors, you know, some of them are more blue, some are more red. 
all of his colors always match. So one could kind of go right into the next one. And even though it's a different color, like tonally, it's always at the same level of value. You're absolutely right. Yeah. No, everything is sort of in that sort of same family. Yeah. There's nothing. He didn't do anything with black and red and white, which honestly, if I was like his his art director, I would, I would ask him for something like that. Just because just, <laughs> just I would want to see it. Of course like, you okay, would. Let's see something in black and white and red and you know, something harsh. Um, yeah, he does. He's got some cool shit. Interesting. So, so now that I'm hoping 59 parks will send me a free poster. I wouldn't hold my breath. I'm sure they will. Or, or they can hire me to do one of these posters. You haven't done one yet. No. Have you I'm been asked? Good. No, I'm not good enough. I can't believe you haven't asked or I, I can't believe you haven't been asked. <laughs> I don't rate. I'm sorry. Wow interesting i stink if if i could give you a park which one would you do the gateway arcs to st louis well it just got done dummy oh damn it someone took it (laughs) what park would you do i don't know go ahead think about it i don't i have a i don't i I don't know a lot of them have been done already just play along and pick one for the bit that i'm trying to do oh 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 the grand canyon Oh, well, I've got good news for you. You don't need their permission to do it. (laughs) Okay. If you want to make your own National Parks poster, guess what? All you need is a computer, a dream, and a piece of paper. Yeah, that's a good point. But I want to be in the cool guy club. But Billy, some might say you are the coolest because you don't need them. You just went rogue and made your own National Parks poster. All right, well, I think everybody's waiting for the rating. You and your poster, three stars. Cools. Damn it. Uh, William? Yeah. I'm going to do a cool override. I think three's a little uh, low. I think three's a little low. Yeah, but four is the most you can get. Who's better than this guy at what he does? I don't know. Jesus? Jesus. That- great guy. Shit artist. I know this for a fact. Not a yeah, good he, artist. He's just all right with me. <laughs> You know, the problem was, is whenever he tried to finger paint, it would just bubble up on his fingers and he couldn't really get it to go because, you know, he floats on everything. That's that, that was stupid. Oh, thank you. Go ahead. You say something funnier. Let's go on to the next one. What's the next one? I can't remember what I did. All right. And now we bring you to Billy's final cool. If you're following us. <laughs> if you're following us over on our YouTube live, make sure that if you leave a comment below, uh, I will grab somebody at random and send you out an AID pin. And Billy, load up that next cool. I have it in front of us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Wait. What is it? I can't remember. Oh yeah, I remember. So this is going to be weird because you can't see what everybody else can see. So there's really no way for us to talk about this in real time because you can't see it. Okay. That's okay. So I picked West Side Story, the film from 1961. I'm going to kill the audio on that so we don't get copy strike. So I have it playing right now, Billy. We can't say the name of it. Could be a break. I can't play the audio from it, smart guy. Oh, yeah, but you can, but me saying the name. Yeah, you can. Pay attention to the show that you're on. Oh, sorry. So this is a film with a poster by Saul Bass. Bet you didn't know that, Mark. He also did the titles for the film. You ever heard of Saul Bass, Mark? Yeah, I've heard of him. I I, I saw Stanley Kubrick rip him a new asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my daughter, I, my daughter, I I try to find films that I can watch with my daughter. She really is getting into like um, dance films yeah so i saw clips on youtube of um like famous dance scenes and movies yeah uh like uh, an american in paris or something like that and um and so we started watching west side story dance scenes and she really loved it so i was like oh so i went and bought the movie and i've been watching west side story with my daughter a bunch and i hadn't seen it in a long time and uh, i think a lot of people that are maybe listening to this or younger than us musical to them sounds corny sure they don't like they don't like musicals they're not into musicals this movie is so cool mark like 
I mean, it's dorky because it's a musical, but it's so cool. Like it, the, the, the production design, first of all, amazing, right? Just like the colors and the sets and all that stuff, the cinematography, amazing. The lighting, so cool. The choreography is awesome. It has some great songs too, yeah. actually. Um, you know, if you don't want to go out and watch the whole film, just go and and watch like, um, stay cool, boy. You know that? Yeah, yeah. That where like they're in the parking garage and they're like, it's what it's we're there. watching right now. Yeah, it's so cool looking, and the they're the way they're dancing is it's absolutely phenomenal. And I've been watching that on repeat with my daughter for the last couple of weeks. So that's cool to me. It's like all great art. You have to really measure it on the context of its times. So if we look at it now, I'm like, oh, this might be considered a little bit cheesy. Although I would say that the the trailer that you sent over to me that me and everybody's watching right now, the coloring and the lighting on this is fantastic. Uh, these characters abide by a lot of Ben from Snake Oil's fashion uh, rules because these guys don't look grossly outdated considering how long ago this is. But when you think about the actual art of the filmmaking, this is cutting edge work for its time. Yeah, I honestly think it probably blew some people away. Oh, it would have to. How many Oscars did it win? I'm curious. I don't know. Look it um, up. Well, I am looking it up. Jeez. Um, I mean, it's hard to make a musical cool. It's hard to tell a story through song and just make you not want to immediately turn the channel. But this is one of those things. It's just a classic and it draws you in. Holy shit. Academy Award for Best Picture. Academy Award for Best Director. Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Academy Award for Best Art Direction, Set Direction. Academy Award for Best Cinematography. Academy Award for Best Costume Design. Academy Award for Best Film Editing. Wow. Academy Award for Best Music. It was a sweep. Scoring. It was a sweep. Academy Award for Best Sound. The only one it didn't win was Screenplay. But it was nominated for it. What year is this? Holy crap. It came out in 61. 61. uh, My God, that's amazing for 1961. Somebody that's over on the live chat wanted to know, have you showed your daughter Thriller yet? No, it's got monsters and stuff. A little scary. That's too advanced? Well, it could be. That's kind of scary. She watched Star Wars. I would say Star Wars is equally scary as Thriller. Eh, There's no... She did watch Star Wars. She likes Star Wars. (laughs) She likes Star Wars a lot. That's great. Last night she was telling me, she goes... She goes, uh, what was she saying? She's like, do you read me? Over. Come in. <laughs> like like the guys on Star Wars or whatever. Yeah. Like, copy. Do you copy? Over. Do you read me? We used to like, get on the swing sets in the backyard, and we would just be swinging back and forth, and we loved the whole yeah. Red Leader one, Red Leader, like, like that whole yeah. like scene. I don't know why we liked that so much. Billy, did you rate this yet? How many cools did you give this? Oh, come on. How many Academy Awards? Four cools. Bing, 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 bing. Billy. That's it from, hey, that's cool with Billy. Billy. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this live. We're going to go record the rest of next Wednesday's Shop Talk. Remember, if you comment below, uh, I will pick somebody random every day to send out a prize. Today will be an AID pin. And thank you so much for watching today's video. Please hit smash like. If we get 100 likes, Billy, what are you going to do next week? Show you my dick. Oh, I just ruined the whole thing. Ruined the entire thing <laughs> right oh at the God. end. Right at the end. All right. Thank oh. you for watching. We'll see you again real soon.